Hello guys, this is Panzer Meister 36. In today's video, we're going to be working more on our Stug 3 prototype, and today we're going to be adding some nice wear and tear effects by brush painting some chipping. In my opinion, chipping effects is one of the most major and key weathering stages because it adds the overall worn and torn and lived in look to the tank because these machines, they see some action and they can really get beat up. In the video, we're going to be doing the two-tone brush chipping effect. Very traditional. This is a great way to add superficial wear and tear and also paint on some deeper scratches that go down to the red primer. And we're also going to try to keep it a little bit more refined than usual because as I know from example it's very easy for chipping effects to get out of hand as you can see here. And once again this video is in collaboration with Scale Studio. He's also working on his own Stug 3 on his own channel so go check that out once you're done here. Alright since the end of the last video in which we did the camouflage application I've painted some of the details in the tank, uh, just really basic stuff like the tools and the wheels. Uh, I don't really want to waste your time on this and I already have videos all about this. Note that I don't actually paint the rubber on the road wheels and the return rollers here because the color is so similar to the base Panzer Grey that once you put dust on this you won't notice the difference. So I already, like I said, I already have a video about painting tools and stuff which I'll link in the top corner here for you guys to go check out if you're interested. But to cover what I did on the vehicle, just quickly for you guys here, I used Panzerice's 310 Old Wood to paint all the wood areas. I used Basalt Gray from AK Gen 3 to paint metal things like tools. A rubber black for the rubber tires. And then I used model color German Camouflage Black Brown for the canvas end of the barrel cleaning rods. Also, I do not paint the fire extinguishers red because they were not red. They were the base color of the vehicle. I also very frequently get asked about the whole kind of process and when to do each effect. So I want to explain that here very briefly. We've already painted the camouflage. So we got the base painting done. We would have applied a filter at the end of the last video like I was explaining. And now we've done the detailed painting of all the tools and accessories. So in my weathering process, the next step is going to be to do the chipping effects. I like to do the wash, which is usually the next step after chipping, but some people like to do it before. That's a personal preference. All right, for the chipping effects, we're going to do brush applied two-tone chipping. So we're going to require two colors. First of all, I've got basalt gray here. This is basically a lighter version of the base color on the tank, which is gray. This will make a nice highlight. I also have hull red, which is a red primer color, which we can use to emphasize some of the previous chips and make them look deeper. I also have a small thing of water here to thin these paints down and I have a small round brush to apply the chips. I often get asked about my brushes so let's also explain that. I do not use anything fancy. This is a Winsor Newton Galleria double O round. Like it's a four dollar paintbrush at my local art store. That's four Canadian dollars so like 250 US. It's a really cheap brush. Um, the other brand I like a lot is the Royal and Langnickel Zen 73 series spotter 10 over 0 round. Uh, again, this is about a $4 Canadian brush. And they hold up very well to acrylics and enamels. So I like to use these ones. I don't bother with those fancy $20 brushes because I just kill them. Alright, let's start with the painting of the chips. So I've got the basalt gray here. This is our lighter base color basically like the, the highlight scrape edge kind of color. I thin it with a little bit of water. You know, these, these AK Gen 3 paints brush very well. And I just thin them a little bit so they can, um, they can be a little bit thick in the bottle. So I thin them with water. Also, quick tip, these little cups I have here, I got this pack of like, I think it's 200 for about $5. This is for like a restaurant, it's from a restaurant supply store. So these are basically for like takeout sauce containers. So that's a really good way to get lots of cups really cheap. All right, back to the process. So I take a little bit of the paint on my brush and just, just a little bit, and we just start to go in and paint the chips. Now having a very small point on your paintbrush definitely helps here, which is why I'm using a, like a double O or a 10 over zero brush. And you really just want to kind of like let the brush make the chips. You don't want to paint chipping shapes because they'll be way too big. So little tiny dots and lines actually have quite a nice and realistic effect. As usual, don't paint the chips everywhere. Put them in places where it makes the most sense. So for me, that's edges, 
raised details and a lot of chips around the hatches because those areas see the most use. So you see I'm picking out the edges because that's where you know stuff gets scraped up but then also the hatches themselves would be being handled very frequently. So just like a little bit of chipping around the edges there. It also serves to highlight details because it kind of pops out the edges because this is a lighter color. Now I'm using a lighter gray here because my tank is gray. If your tank is green or yellow, you'd pick a light green or a light yellow or similar. Just a lighter version of the base color. All right, so I've spent maybe 15 minutes on the chipping and you can just see, you know, I've only done it right here, but look at how much more interesting that looks compared to the engine deck and the other areas of the tank that are quite barren right now. The chipping has a nice effect. Makes the tank really look like it's been, you know, seeing some action. This Stug 3 prototype was used for a while and never actually saw combat, but it was used for at least two years as a training vehicle. So it would be, you know, it would be used quite a lot. And arguably, it could have even lived a lot longer than most tanks that were actually in combat. Again, chipping, keep it in areas where it makes the most sense. So these transmission hatches, they're accessed pretty frequently. And if the crew wants to walk up the front of the tank to get to the upper hatches, you know, that's the route they would take as well. Engine deck also sees a fair amount of use because you got to access the engine there. But I'm not making it crazy here, just around the edges of hatches, because that's what you're actually handling. All right, now we have our tank here with the base chipping applied. This is just the first color, the highlight edge color as I call it. And it actually looks really good. If you want, you could just leave it like this and it you know, looks great. But we can go even further and add some more depth to some of the chips in the heavier areas. This probably took about two hours total for the base chipping effects. Now I'm grabbing my red primer color. Again, this is AK Gen 3 acrylic, very good brush paints, hull red color. I'm actually going to start by painting the primer underneath the area that would have been covered by the removed section of fender here at the front. So the red primer is meant to represent the primer that's applied over top of the bare metal, but then the camouflage will be applied over top of this color. So it's obviously exposed there because the fender would have covered that at the factory when they painted the gray and the brown. So logically, any chips that are scraping through the base camouflage color would also reveal the red primer underneath. So as you can see, I'm taking some of the red color and I'm applying it inside some of the previous chips. I'm not applying this as a new area chipping effect. This is only applied inside some of the largest gray chips because the light gray is meant to represent the scraping of the paint. And then if that scrape is deep enough, it will also expose the red primer underneath the camouflage paint. So for that reason, the red chips are only kind of inside the previous gray chips. And I'm not applying the red inside every single chip, otherwise it'll get out of hand really quick. So I'm only picking the heaviest areas of the light gray chipping, and I'm applying the red inside those. So maybe a third or a quarter of the chips get the red inside them. Most remain just the light gray scrapes. So with a couple of close-ups here, I want to illustrate that. You can see there's only a little bit of red in that scrape there. You know, these boxes, they get used quite a bit, so I put some red primer inside some of the gray chips there. And on the engine deck, I pick really just, you know, the heavier areas, so these hatches here that they would access. And then there's also this kind of raised edge there, so I picked just a couple of spots for the red on that as well. But again, most of the chipping is just left as the light gray to simulate the superficial wear and tear. Because tanks didn't really get that chipped up, so I don't want to put the red primer everywhere. That would look crazy. And there we go, we've completed the chipping effects in our tank. Only took me maybe three, four hours max because I kept the chipping pretty refined on this vehicle. Uh, it's still, you know, it's still arguably heavy, but you know, there's not tons of chipping everywhere. It's not like a DAC tank where it's been like sandblasted. Overall, just looks like it's been used. You know, the guys have been opening up these hatches here. They've been walking around, scraping up some of the exposed edges. But the tank isn't a disaster on wheels. And besides, most of the chipping is actually just that light highlight edge color. The red primer is quite refined. And that's something that's very hard to achieve with those new techniques like chipping fluid. Because you can only really get 
one color showing through. And as always, remember to keep the chipping in areas where it makes sense. So I don't have any chipping on the gun here. Also no chipping on the front of the hull because those areas don't really get used that much by the crew. Chipping is most effective to emphasize the areas that the crew would walk around and use the most. Anyways, that's about it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Next week we're going to look at supplying some washes and maybe we won't even need to use a dark wash in this one. I have some ideas for some new techniques to try. And also remember to go check out Skill Studio's video after this one because he's also working on his own Stug 3, showing you guys some weathering techniques on that one as well. As always, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. They really help me making these videos. If you can support me on Patreon, please consider it. It's much appreciated. As always, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye and happy modeling.